In today's video, we're going to create this stylized text morph animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Let's go. First things first, make sure your project and timeline are of 1920 by 1080 resolution at 24 frames per second. Next, open the Effects tab and under Toolbox and Effects, you have your Fusion Composition. Drag it on the timeline, close the Effects tab, and let's trim the Fusion Composition to be around 3 seconds. Perfect. Keep the playhead at the beginning of the Fusion Composition and let's move to Fusion. Now, let's create our background first. So bring in a background node and a merge node. With the merge selected, press F2 on the keyboard and let's call it Final Merge. Connect it to the media out, select the background node, press F2 on the keyboard and let's call this color PG. And connect it to the background input of the merge node. That is the yellow triangle. Now let's move these closer to the media out and leave them as they are. Now let's bring in our text. Wrap the text node, connect it to the merge as a foreground element. That means the green triangle. Type in our word, change the font and the font style and also the size. Next, let's bring in our second text by selecting the text node, pressing Ctrl C on the keyboard, double click on the empty space, and instead of pressing Ctrl V, we're gonna press Ctrl Shift V to create an instance of the text node. Basically, an instance is a fancier way of copy pasting a node because all the green boxes you see around our options indicate that the options in the instance are linked to the source. Let me show you. Let me connect the instance to the merge as well. And if I select the instance and change the size, the value of 0 to 112 will be visible also in the source. And if I change the source, it will be visible and changed in the instance. Now let's delete this merge node because we're not going to need it. Select the instance node, right click on the text box and select the instance. This means our text box from the instance node is not linked anymore to the text box in the source node. Now double click on the empty space, press shift spacebar and search for dissolve. Bring it in, press and hold shift on the keyboard, click on the node and drag it in between text one and final merge. And as you can see, once I drag it over the white line, it changes to green and blue. This means we're going to connect a new node. Release, and now we have our dissolve connected. Make sure the source text is as a background element and the instance as a foreground element. Now let's change the text inside the instance and bring our playhead around frame 36. Click on the dissolve node, change the value to 0.5 and set a keyframe. Next, let's jump to frame 26 and change the value from 0 0.5 to 0. Now, jump to frame 46 and change the value from 0.5 to 1. This way, we have our transition from one word to the other. Next, we're going to start to create the shape of our morph animation. And to do that, double click on the empty space, shift spacebar, and bring in a blur node. Shift click on the node, bring it in between, release. Now our dissolve keyframes are between frame 26 and 46, and the middle one is at 36. So we're going to select the blur node, go to frame 28, bring the value of the blur size to zero, set a keyframe, go to frame 36, change the value from zero to 10, and then go to frame 44, and change the value back to zero. Let's play it back. Good, next, let's make some room. Double click on the empty space, shift spacebar, and let's search for bitmap. Shift click, bring it in, release, and now we can start creating our shape. Let's bring our playhead at frame 36, and from all these options, we're just gonna play with the low end, and the high end of the range slider. If we stick more closely to the low end, 
our shape is going to look like a white blob, basically. If we stay close to the high end, our shape is going to look more like a ghost transition. This one would be great for a horror movie or something like that. But if you want to have the shape that was in the intro, we're going to stick to the middle of the range. So our low end will be around 0.4 and our high end will be around 0.7. Now let's play this back. Perfect. Now let's move on to stylizing the animation. And for that, we're going to use a drip node. Double click on the empty space, shift spacebar and search for drip. Shift click, bring it in. Now we're going to change the shape. Random is the best one out of all these. As you can see, it creates this particle type of effect, but we're not going to leave the default settings. So let's change the aspect by decreasing it to 0.88. The amplitude, I'm going to increase it to 0.31. And the dampening, I'm going to increase it to 0.55. Place the playhead at frame 36 and set a keyframe for aspect, amplitude, and dampening. Next, I'm going to jump at frame 28 and only decrease the amplitude. Next, jump to frame 37 and set a keyframe for all three values, but do not change the values. We want to keep the aspect, amplitude, and dampening at the same values just for one frame. Now let's jump to frame 44 and decrease the amplitude. Let's play this back. Perfect. But now let's add a little extra sauce on top of it by dragging in a fast noise node. Now with the fast noise, you have two ways on how you can enhance this animation by connecting it to the blur or to the drip. Let me show you first how it works with the drip node. It's going to connect as a mask anyway, so don't worry about which triangle you need to connect it. Then go into the inspector, increase the detail to 7.5, the contrast to 2.8, and the brightness to 0.13. Next, unlock X and Y, increase the Y scale to 13.26, and the Y scale to 15.51. Now let's play this back. And there you have it. Now, let me show you how the fast noise works with the blur. As you can see, it focuses more on creating a particle type of effect. So if you're into that, you can keep it connected to the blur node, but I prefer the effect that I get from the drip node. Now let's move on to the final step, adding color to our text. And to do that, we're going to use a background node that will act as a coloring mask for our text. And you're probably wondering, why are we not using the color option inside the text node? Well, we can't, because if we change the color inside here, the bitmap will convert it to black and white, because that's what the bitmap node does. It converts everything that is connected to it to a black and white image. So we're going to use the background node as a workaround to color our text. Let's make some room, disconnect the drip from the merge and connect it to the background, then connect the background to the merge. Press F2 on the keyboard and let's call this color text. Next, let's change the type from solid color to gradient. Next, click on the viewer, press Ctrl G on the keyboard to bring the guidelines. And let's grab the left handle, bring it down and the right handle and bring it up. Now in the inspector, click on the left arrow of the gradient, click on the color. Let's change it to a bright teal or aqua. Next, click on the right arrow, change the color, and let's choose a deep blue. Now, let's bring in the arrows. And also, let's switch the position of the handles so that we have the teal up top and the blue at the bottom. Now, let's press Ctrl G again to disable the guidelines and play it back. And that is how you create a stylized text morph animation in Fusion. And if you want to learn more about text animations and motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, start here and I'll see you in the next video.